Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're going to be checking out a new game by Crunchyroll Games called Grand Alliance. Now this game just went into early access today and I know like the information about this game kind of popped up a few months ago and I think a lot of us like looking into the game itself, I was like, hey, that looks like it's going to be a pretty good anime game. I'm pretty excited for it to come out. Now, I don't know when the official launch is going to happen or even necessarily where the early access region is for the game right now. I was able to just find kind of a download and some other YouTubers and stuff kind of posting it online. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and actually check the game out and give you guys my overall thoughts. Now, if you guys enjoy this type of video, if you guys want to see more videos on gacha games, mobile games, anything like that, or any games you want to recommend, let me know down below in the comments. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now, Grand Alliance, the new anime mobile game from Country Roll Games. How is it? It is, it's terrible, you guys. It is not a good game at all. Now, I do have to say, like, the actual art designs for the characters look really, really good. I have to say, like, that's probably the only highlight to this game so far for me, is all the characters actually look pretty good. So far, I actually only have uh, four characters, which I believe I got all of them simply just by playing through the game itself. I don't remember. I think I summoned one at the very beginning, but the summoning in this game is a little bit weird, which we'll get into later in this video, which does imply some pay to win elements behind it, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So here are all the characters I currently have on my team. Now they told that this game is sort of an action RPG, but not really. Like the action part of this game is completely missing because besides like the character progression and the art design for the characters, which I think are pretty good. It's the gameplay itself that just, oh, the gameplay is so, so boring. I would have played a lot more of this game, got a lot farther into it. I just want to unlock most of the main content itself to talk to you guys about it. And I'm glad I did that because there is some elements of this game that kind of alleviate what could potentially be pay to win elements behind it. Um, but the gameplay itself is just, it's really hard to get through. Now the story of this game is fine. It's not anything to, to you know, shout out about or anything like that. It, it, it's an okay story. You do get to see the character designs. Again, I think they do look really good. Um, but let's go ahead and actually just jump into it because the actual gameplay that you're seeing right here, there is auto skill, auto movement that unlocks fairly early in the game. It is just, it's such, oh, it's so boring to watch. It's not an action RPG at all. Basically, you can, you can move your characters around if you want to. It's really, really slow. Your characters move really slow. Like, I don't even really like the art design for this part of the game. This just looks really cheap. Like, this looks like a game that should have come out like five years ago if i'm gonna be honest with you but basically your characters will just automatically attack any enemies near them you just kind of let them do their thing you can go through and like manually activate their skills if you want to so let's go ahead and turn off auto uh, skill and auto move but basically what you can do is you can kind of drag the skill and activate them where you want them to kind of reminds me a little bit of grand chase but i feel like grand chase does this way better you can go ahead and activate this ability he'll charge forward dealing damage to the enemy and that's the action part to this game. It's it's really not action at all. It's it's real it's rather boring to be honest with you guys. There it just it feels really slow. There's not a lot of impact when it comes to the like, using abilities and skills. Now your characters do have what's known as um, drive skills. They're kind of like ultimate abilities that your characters can use. However, if you have it on auto skill, auto movement, your characters won't activate their drive abilities. You are going to have to manually do that. However, unlike other mobile games, other anime games like this, or even just whatever, ultimate skills are usually ultimate, right? Like they look flashy, they look crazy. It makes the game just awesome. The drive abilities in this are again, just super, super boring, okay? Like I have one of my characters getting ready to activate their ultimate ability, which I'll show you in just a second. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm so disappointed. Here we go, overdrive ready. We'll drag it, activate, kill these snails, vortex slash, that was it. There you go, that's an ultimate ability. Let's go ahead and activate another one. Arcane Barrage, done. And that, it's not it's not flashy at all. I kind of wish we would have had some kind of cinematic cutscene or something like that. I don't know, just something to make the combat in this game just more impactful. It just doesn't feel like a very impactful gameplay. It's super boring to watch. It's just, it's the main meat of this game and it makes me not want to play it just because it feels so slow. Like, I don't mind, like, the, the dragging of the skills and your character's auto-attacking and everything like that. There just seems to be a lack of oomph, if that makes a lot of sense. Now, there is an aspect to this game that I think is really, really interesting, and it comes to your actual character's skills that they can use. Now, this game has a really weird way of doing summons. Now, you can summon for characters, and you can summon for skills. It kind of reminds me a little bit, like, of the Clash Royale style of progression. You have to buy shards, you have to buy duplicates. 
of skills to upgrade them, which is where like the kind of a to win progression of this game can kind of into play. But you'll notice right there, I've got a couple of skills that are locked. Now, once I've unlocked um, enough shards of those specific abilities, I'll be able to equip them onto any of these characters. You can kind of swap them in and out and really kind of customize your overall team. So if you have a healing skill that you have that you've gotten through summons because you've been lucky enough, you can equip it onto like a basic healer or like a not, not a very good healer on your team or whatever. And you've got that ultimate ability that you can kind of swap in and out and kind of decide how you want your squads to be you know, set up. I do like that aspect that you can kind of swap your skills around and stuff like that. It's just, I'm not the biggest fan of having to go through and collect, you know, a whole bunch of different shards for all of these different, you know, skills and stuff. Now, I did mention that with that kind of pay to win element behind it, there is a way that you can actually go through as you're playing through the game, you can actually go through the treasure hunt itself and find chests. Now you can take those chests, you can open them and they'll give you skills. They, they actually give you quite a lot of them, a lot of skill shards. But there's another really annoying aspect to this game where you have your chests set up and they go on timers, just like Clash Royale. So dumb, okay? Because it took three hours to open up a basic chest. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I understand that they're giving us a, a free way to get the skills and the shards that we want. I just, I don't like chest timers. I think they're really, really annoying, especially having to spend premium currency. And for like a three hour chest, it was like a lot. It was like 300 premium currency in order to do it. I don't know. It just, again, it's, it's like they're shooting themselves in their own foot. They're like, here's a free way to get stuff. And here's making it as worse as we possibly can. Anyway, you have, um, when it comes to actual character progression itself in this game, you actually don't have to summon for duplicates for these characters. You just need specific, uh, let's see. I think it's under the enhance. No. Oh wait, you do need, yeah, you do need duplicates. That's one thing I'm gonna get to. What I'm talking about is the tier up function. If you wanna tier them up, star rate them up, you actually have to get these specific e emblems for the different characters which you can get through those special expeditions. They unlock, certain ones unlock on certain days. Towards the weekend, you know, all of them unlock. You've seen it before in other games. Now, again, this is another little bit of a thing that kind of pushes towards the pay to win is you do need duplicates in order to upgrade these characters by enhancing them with certain tokens of that specific character. Each level of the enhancement, like it says right there, increases base, base HP, armor, and damage by 5%. Now, I don't know how often that you can actually go through and enhance these characters, but there is a way that for us to be able to get them without having to rely on summoning and having like luck and stuff. Now throughout the week, every week it resets and there are four brand new heroes that will be recruitable here in the tavern itself. Now you can see the ones that have the two tokens. Those are characters that I actually have. Now I can either use, I believe they're tokens from the PVP aspect of this game. You can get those for free and you can use them to recruit duplicates of the characters that you need, or you can just use the premium currency which you get through playing the game. But it is a little bit of a slow trickle in order to get the premium currency. So it does kind of alleviate the fact that you have to summon for duplicates, but again, duplicates, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, out of with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually jump in and do some summons here in the shop. Now, the summoning rates for the characters is actually pretty good. So if we actually go and take a look at the normal uh, rate up summons right now uh, for the regular banner, it's a 10% chance to get a hero. And then the other 90% chance is to get skills. However, it's a 3% chance to get a tier five skill, which is the highest. 3% chance, for like a high tier thing, like either a hero or like a weapon or a skill, whatever, in other gacha games. I feel like it's slightly below average. It's just kind of right in there. A 10% chance to get a hero is not bad, but again, it's split up between all of the different heroes in the game. But when they do have rate up banners for certain characters, that specific character does get rated up to 3% chance to get that specific character. Now I have seen in other games when there's like a rate up banner for a specific character, they go up to like 1%, 1.5% at the highest. The 3% is okay, but those are the rate up summons for this game. So let's go ahead, we're gonna spend 750 premium gems and uh, see if we can't get Brunhild. I probably will not be playing this game after this, but here we go. So Frost Shot, we got a brand new skill. A two, uh, two star, a three star launch. We got Akari, so a three star uh, hero. We got three star ice shards. I'm hoping that's not the only hero that we end up getting though. I have a feeling it might be. Two star infernal shot. Two star lightning shot. So the last three coming up. Have we gotten a four star? I think we may have gotten one four star. I, I think I 
Totally missed it. Two star, and then the last one, is it gonna be anything good at all? Probably not. A two star blazing shot. So, we didn't even get a four star. We got a couple three stars. So we got four three stars, and then we got ourselves a brand new hero. There you guys go, Grand Alliance. A game I feel like is, I don't know, it's it's shooting itself in the foot with a lot of the mechanics behind it. But there you guys go, Grand Alliance in early access. If I find an easier way to download the game, I'll, let, I'll put a link down in the description. Am I gonna be playing this game when it comes out? Probably not, maybe I'll do like an updated video for like its official launch. And again, if you guys enjoyed this video and wanna see more videos like this, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, friends, my name's Coolio, and I'll see you next time.